So now that we have a general idea of the basics of networks and networking, let's take a step back and start with the physical layer that makes all of this networking possible. So this is the layer, those wires, those cables that connect our computers, our routers, connect our DVR, give us broadband through uh, thick net cabling, etc. So we'll take a look at this. I'm going to go ahead and pass the objectives and we'll get started with just understanding the way that we label cables. So N signaling X. So N refers to the signaling rate in megabits per second. Now we're going to talk about megabits per second versus megahertz here in just a minute. So signaling stands for the signaling type, either baseband or broadband, and then X is the unique identifier for the specific Ethernet cabling scheme. So an example, 100 base X, and then if you'd like to pause the video, you can read. I've given you a couple more examples here, some standards, uh, 100 base T4, four twisted pairs, telephone twisted pair wire, etc. So you can look through the rest of those. So twisted pair cables is what we pretty much think of today uh, You know, when we're dealing with the idea of Ethernet cables. Two types, shielded twisted pairs. So as you can see here, it gives a shield, it protects um, the signal in the cables and then unshielded twisted pair. Now this is what we commonly work with today is unshielded twisted pair. So if you're you know building some cables yourself or, or grabbing cables you know you need one to go to your from your switch to your computer that's most likely what you're gonna pick up. So unshielded twisted pair it's uh, cheaper than other types of cabling because we don't have that shielding in there. Okay now standard used to be Cat5e I mean Cat5, now it's Cat5e, enhanced. We'll talk more about that. Uh, easy to work with. It's easy to, to cut and snip and get those connectors on. And it's amazing what we've been able to do with the technology that exists on both ends. So it used to be thought that, that we would maximize that cable transmission rate at 10 megabits per second. We're now up to 100 and Cat5e upwards of a gigabit. So so Cat5 is pretty much gone by the wayside. Cat5e is can you know transfer at a gigabit. Now the challenge there though is we're reaching those limits with Cat5e. So the connectors on each end um, so that we understand sort of the difference and RJ11 is the phone jack connector. So that's what for those of you that remember the old telephones before we gave those up for cell phones uh, connected into the back of the phone. Then there was the RJ22, which had fewer wires. That's what connected the handset to the phone. And then Ethernet for data networks, RJ45. So that's the four twisted pair. We'll look more at those later. So that's what we're used to, you know, usually associated with Cat3, Cat4, uh, etc. So here's an example of a standard RJ45 uh, connector. You know, we see we have room for the eight wires in there. So categorizing cables for twisted pair, uh, you know, is basically followed by a number. So Cat5, Cat5e, and Cat6. Now, <laughs> the difference between Cat5e and Cat6 is the transmission rate not in megabits but in, in megahertz. So with Cat5e, it's 100 megahertz. With Cat6, it's 200 megahertz. Now, Although most applications aren't yet utilizing 200 megahertz, it's the fact that, that that Cat6 cable can grow as we're doing more, especially as we're transferring more multimedia across that cable. So the idea is instead of having a projector, for example, that has to connect with a VGA or a DVI cable or an HDMI cable, for long runs we can use a Cat6 cable you know, and keep the quality. So one thing to understand, and we'll, we'll talk more about attenuation and interference later, but notice how the cables in a Cat5e unshielded twisted pair are twisted differently. So we've got the white orange orange, so it's hard to see, but this cable right here has a little orange twist on it as well. So there's the white orange orange, white blue blue, uh, white green green, and white brown brown, and as you can see, we twist them at different rates or turns per meter, and the reason we do that, you know, or turn per centimeter, um, the reason we do that is so that this signal, um, 
the signal going down this wire will not interfere with the signal going down that wire. Now I'm keeping it basic in my in my um, description here. So uh, now we're looking at the female side. This is upside down, just so you can see that you know what we do is we run the wires down the middle, you know, run them through here, clip them off with a punch down, and then put a dust cover on. This then would go into a wall jack. Uh, for use. So a lot of times in, in wall jacks now what we'll see uh, is that a lot of things are run with cat5 cabling even if we're only going to use some of the the wires. So why? Because it's inexpensive it's pretty standard to get. So as you can see here you know cat1 you know not rated for data uh, a lot of obsolete cat cables here uh, Cat5, you know, pretty much replaced with 5E, so 5E is what we have, and then of course 6, you know, they're saying rated at 250 megahertz, I've read 200, you know, preferred standard for gigabit ethernet. So the reason being on the 5E, um, when we talk about gigabit, we actually will lose some of the transmission rate uh, running gigabit over that 5E, so we're, we're getting to its limit. Just another example here of a twisted pair cat six. And then sort of the standards and the way we wire them. So there's the TIA, EIA, 568A, 568B. And you'll notice the difference is in <laughs> the way it's wired. So you know, one, two, three, and six, um, you know, in, in A, green, white, green, orange, white, orange. So I'll give you another example here. I think this this better describes it. So 568A, 568B, you know, used differently. We'll talk about that in a minute, you know, straight through versus a crossover. And, you know, which pin? Well, as we look at the connector, okay, we put the tab on the bottom. The pin at the left is pin one, okay? So, you know, something to learn, you know, the white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. That's the one I remember from my Cisco days. So types of commonly used cables, again, a straight through cable is an A cable, that's how we would wire it, a crossover cable being a B, a rolled cable, rollover, we'll talk about these, or a hardware loop back. So a straight through cable <coughs> connects devices with dissimilar functions, so a host to a switch, so that can be you know a computer to a switch, we would use a straight through cable, a router to a switch or a hub, so different things. Now, as soon as we start connecting common devices together, we need to look at a crossover cable. So this can be a host to host. So if we wanted to take two computers and connect them directly together to share information, we would use a crossover cable. So if you're familiar with, um, you know, Microsoft has a way for me to transfer all of my data, say from one computer to another computer, uh, and they give me that transfer cable, that I buy, well, that's that's a crossover cable essentially. You could build your own and save yourself some money there. So more on crossover cabling. Again, um, if you want to read these, I'm, I'm going pretty quick. If you want to read these in details, just pause the video. So T1 crossover cable, specialized crossover cable used in T1 applications. We'll talk more about T1s later. You know, commonly used in WAN networks. So a rolled cable is used to connect a host to a router's console port. So a, we tend to refer to them as a rollover cable. And that's the cable that allow me to telnet into, into a router so that I can work with the command line interface by connecting directly to uh, the router itself. So not used to connect Ethernet devices. So if we want to manage a router, manage a switch, that's the cable we need. So. A uh, hardware loopback, you know, a live network connection to test a computer or install software. Uh, you can use the loopback to trick the PC into seeing its own output as an input. So kind of interesting there. Not really used as much anymore. A little bit more on the shielded twisted pair. I just give you another example. This is, you know, in, instead of just having the, the shielding here, you know, it's shielding all of the, the cables. So this would be used in a place that, that there was going to be interference um, and we needed to make sure that, that that interference did not affect the data that was transferring over the, the cable. Really no longer popular in use, but uh, you know definitely there if you were to need it. So 
coaxial cable, you're pretty familiar with this. That's connecting, you know, your uh, broadband into your modem and then out of your modem or, or, or your broadband into your, we used to go into the TV, now we're usually going into a cable box and then we can come out of the cable box you know, with HDMI or whatever. So talk a little bit more about plenum grade rating so it does not release. Basically plenum rated means that if there's a fire, it's not gonna release toxic gases if it catches on fire. So standard uh, coaxial cable specifications. Go ahead and pause this and take a look. Uh, you'll see the RJ59 and RJ6 uh, you know, is, is pretty much the standards that we see today. So thin ethernet versus uh, thin net. So a thin coaxial cable, 10 base T, you know, 10 megabit data rates up to 200 meters for thin. Um, BNC connector, so if you remember from our old, this is our bus or our ring topology that we would use. An F connector, this is what we're used to seeing when connecting our cable television or now goes into the back of our modem. RJ59 coaxial cable is used for low power video. So the idea here is this is what we would connect if we were going the old connections before HDMI became the standard across, you know, for connecting like a um, video camera, you know, to, to a production system, that kind of thing. RJ6, here's what we see for thick net. This is our cable coming into the house. Um, and sometimes our cable throughout the house. Fast broadband internet connections, you know, also used for those, of course. So that's the idea that that uh, Ben Broadband, for example, d doesn't have to come out and replace all these cables to make things run faster because we're changing the technology. Now, eventually, of course, of course, we get to a limit of what that physical cable can handle. And that's when we start looking at increasing what wires are coming into the house. So something we haven't seen really come to fruition is this idea of broadband over power line. You know, so standard power grid and power cables carrying electricity and data. Now, where we do actually see this used is with some of the home smart technology where we can plug in a um, command module and then throughout the house to our, you know, standard electrical connections plug in boxes so that we can send signals to do things like turn on and turn off uh, smart you know technology devices so you know if we have a lamp we want to turn on or off through smart technology we can do that so um, that's where we see the availability you know in the US is, is in that sort of use of smart technology but we don't tend to see the broadband over over the power lines so uh, most likely you're familiar with the idea of a serial cable you know so serial means one bit after another is sent out onto the line or fiber and you know interpreted by the network so each one and zero is read separately and then combined with the others to form the data so we send packets serially you know examples uh, you know recommended standard of an um, R232 and then USB so USB, you know, we have the USB 2.0. Now we see the USB 3.0 on your computer. Uh, if it's fairly modern, you probably have both. So even on my brand new Dell, I have both. And um, so my USB ports, my USB 3.0 ports will be blue. My 2.0 are black or white. And then of course, uh, if you've gotten a phone lately, you've gotten this connector for the phone you know, where we have a USB 2.0 portion and a 3.0 portion, um, you know, for our phones or for things like uh, solid state, dri external solid state drives or like the Western Digital 3.0 backup external drives. So cool thing about USB, we can connect 127 devices in a chain, um, you know, theoretically, you know. So USB versions, we had 1.0, 2.0, um, you know, you can go look up the data rates and the comparisons, you know, 2.0 maximum data rate of 400 megabits per second. Now we're looking at 3.0 of 4.8 uh, gigabits per second. So huge data rate. All you need to do to really understand the difference is to go in and um, if you have a 3.0 external drive, go ahead and back up your computer, 
do it on a 2.0, see how long the difference takes. So great way to kind of see really the power of that technology. So a um, little bit more back to plenum versus non-plenum. So, you know, plenum grade, if we're running cabling in the plenum, so this area here is considered the plenum, we need to make sure that it's plenum grade and not um, gonna give off toxic gases. So cables run through plenum. Uh, if you get a chance in Pioneer 232, our new networking lab, you'll go ahead and notice that we have a uh, raised floor so that we can run all those data connections that you see up through the floor, you know, and then we have this area here uh, where connections are run as well for things like the projector. So you might uh, go in and check that out. So electromagnetic interference, speed, distance limitations, duplexing, this is all stuff that affects the idea behind copper cabling. So electronic, uh, electromagnetic interference, two wires next to each other, create a magnetic field. Um, the result is noise, so that's gonna limit the quality, okay? Um, <coughs> it can result in attenuation, crosstalk, uh, you know, security and electromagnetism. So speed, of course, bandwidth, latency, the time delay, and throughput, the amount of actual data carried over the line. So there are distance limitations. You know, pretty much the standard one to know is that in uh, unshielded twisted pair, it's 328 feet or 100 meters. So we can only run a cable 100 meters before we have to do something to increase the strength of the signal so that it can be read on the other end. Uh, duplexing. So this is, you know, how, how does the signal go back and forth over the cable? So simplex, uh, device can broadcast or receive but can't do both. In half duplex, the device can send or receive but not both at the same time. So, you know, we can send um, signal one way and then stop it and get a, a response back. This is where, you know, token ring, right? We can only go in one way. That's why the signal had to go all the way around the ring, you know, back to the sending device, and then it could send another signal. Or full duplex, you know, um, because we have, you know, the wire capability, full duplex can send and receive communication at the same time. So let's take a look here. So here's a graphical example, you know, half duplex, it's gonna send the information then the other computer's gonna be able to, uh, once all that information is sent, um, it's gonna go and send it back. So the reason we have full duplex now is because we have a thing called, which we'll talk about more later, called collision detection. All right, so that's enough for part one. We will discuss part two of uh, module two in the next video. Take care.